This is a printer I've been looking forward to since I saw it the first time. It's a pre-production Micronix SLS printer. Unlike most of the other printers we've looked at, this is a laser printer that can print out of nylon and get you almost production ready parts. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> this thing should be able to do production ready parts without any supports and with almost any geometry you could think of, which is amazing. In box number two, we have the build chamber, which holds all of your raw powder and eventually your completed parts. Unlike most other printers, for this type of printer, you need a full build chamber and we'll get into exactly why later on. Next up, we have the powder processing unit. This particular one, unfortunately, got damaged during shipping, but they were able to send us a replacement right away. Looking inside it, we have a sieve for recycling your powder, a filter and extractor, a bunch of processing tools, a mask and some gloves, power adapter, and the powder itself. Oh, looks like they included a couple of uh, test parts too. <laughs> looks like we were sent a couple of extra care packages as well. <laughs> some more test prints. Ah. I made a little uh, version of the stubby. And this last part that we have to open up is a glass pane to go on top of the build chamber. We've gotten everything opened up, but now we have to go through the first setup steps for the printer and all of its components. I was wrong, there's more to unpack inside the printer itself. Part removal scooper and some halogen bulbs. We've gotten through the first bit of setup, and now we get to power it on. Hey, success. And she goes. Powder. Needs to get smacked around a little. Like actually. And then it goes. Now that the printer's set up and ready to go, let's take a look at the other part of this that I'm quite intrigued by, the slicer. It's based on Unreal Engine, which unlike most other slicers, means you can just throw parts in, have them drop into the build volume, and it'll just self-pack for you, which anyone who's had to pack a build plate knows that's a massive quality of life improvement. With the other SLS system we have, when we're putting parts into the slicer, we have to place them all essentially manually if we want to get them close together. Its slicer doesn't handle things very well. Ah, so you can see how it's running through each layer that it's going to print. Though I can't tell if it'll show me what the whole part looks like just from the print file itself. So that might be a surprise for all of us later. Let's actually get printing. So insert this in. Print from SD. Linus demo. Two hours and 20 minutes. It's gonna heat up for probably about 15 minutes and then it'll start actually going through the process of printing. With all of the SLS printers of this style, they take a very fine powder, spread it across the print bed in a very small layer, heat it up, and then hit it with a laser to turn it into a liquid in a very small area and sinter it together. After that, it spreads another layer of powder across and does it again. What that means is you can have any part geometry you want without any supports and having to worry about it because the uncentered material is your support and you can recover most of it after the fact. Our print finished up overnight. Before we take a look at it, let's hear this message from our sponsor. Thanks to Motion Gray for sponsoring this video. Their sit to stand desks come in a wide variety of models and sizes with easy to follow instructions and all the tools you need for assembly included right in the box. Check out the Ergo 2 series, some of the most affordable desks of this type on the market. With a two segment frame and a quiet but powerful single motor, it has a height adjustment range of 28 to 46 inches and supports up to 176 pounds of weight. That's about 80 kilograms for you metric lovers. So pick up your own Motion Gray using our link in the description to get 10% off using the code Linus. Now we got it out of the printer. We're getting the top glass off placing our filter out back on using our transfer tool, which is a nice little scoop. It's pretty cleverly designed. 
Place that down here. Now we're gonna transfer this into our sifting tool, which looking inside, it's a little sieve that'll recycle a lot of the used powder and should hold all of our parts above it. This part's gonna stay loud for a bit. So we have a couple of bricks, but they didn't break apart too well. I'm gonna break these down by hand a little bit more. Close it up and give it a shake. You can potentially break the parts if they're really fragile, but from what I saw, these ones should be pretty robust. I got most of the bulk powder off, and since we do have a sandblaster, I'm gonna take these over and clean them up over there. Looks like we have parts of a lightsaber, a little Deadpool ninja, that's cute. And then some more keychains with the Micronics logo and little uh, scales on the back. The parts look pretty much comparable to the other SLS printers that I've seen in the past. Break one just to see. Yup. Strip back in. There you go. So yeah, they're definitely mighty strong, as I would expect. They're essentially solid nylon, though more brittle because of the nature of how they're made, but certainly a capable printer. Now that we've seen the printer, all of its parts, and what it can do, let's talk about Micronics itself. Normally, we don't cover Kickstarters on Short Circuit, but for this one, we made a bit of an exception because myself and a bunch of other people on the team were really excited about the technology and the potential options that it could lend to creators or other people due to its price point and its form factor compared to competing products. The planned launch for the Kickstarter is June 13th, and they've said they expect things to ship in April 2025. But as with all Kickstarters, it's never a guarantee, so your mileage may vary. For another system that's similar to this capability, you're looking at about $17,000 at a starting point. And this one is gonna run you 4,500 retail price. The Kickstarter price is somewhere between 3,000 and about 3,700. And the overall form factor of this is movable by one person. Whereas if you compare that to the Fuse One Plus that we have, that's at minimum a two person move with a lot of infrastructure around you. So the portability and ease of use of this potentially makes it accessible to individual makers or small companies. For the overall specs of the machine, they expect it to be able to hold about 0.1 millimeter tolerances for the individual parts. The total build volume is about 160 by 160 by 200 millimeters, which is a little bit smaller than some of the other competitors, but still a pretty good build volume, especially for a printer of this size, which is about 310 by 330 by 700 millimeters. Again, pretty movable by one person. Having this printer and using it has made me more excited about it than less. Thanks for watching this short circuit. If you liked it and want to see more, check out our Prusa Mark IV video.